You need to remove your trooper here. He's Don't okay. threaten me. Can I just talk to you? I'm sorry, what was it again? Steve. Steve, okay. That's what I thought. So we were advised that uh, you want to come in and file a complaint? How's it going? My son told me you're in there, and I was like, I said, I am free. Don't threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you, you need me. to back up out of my space. Don't threaten me. Uh, I am free. I am, I am free, yeah. My dad loves your content. Would your name happen to be Gandalf? <laughs> I am Gandalf. <laughs> I knew it. I, I could hear it. Uh, that close? Are you trying to pick a fight? Uh, What's you know what? Unless you want to give up your name, I'm okay. You're just not going to identify? Trooper, can I get your name and bachelor? Not going to identify? Okay, it's going to make it pretty difficult to be able to move forward with the complaint in any major way if you don't want to come forward with your name. What is your last name? I don't want to identify. I don't need to identify to make a complaint. Yeah. I just rather have it be anonymous. What, what, what do you expect us to do uh, with this? Thing? My expectation if would be if they don't have a way to follow up on this. <laughs> Was there something? Else? I noticed you guys you were taking a few photos of something. Uh, not quite yet. Uh, I've got a little business I got to do inside here in a few minutes, but uh, I think okay. I'm good to go at this point. But all I right, just kind of strange. everyone i am free it's august 22nd 2024 i am in the city of puyallup pierce county washington state head on over to the district one regional headquarters this is not the uh overall headquarters for washington state patrol which is in olympia uh this is the regional headquarters district one uh this is regarding my complaint about washington state patrol trooper Russell Burkhart, badge 392. When I encountered him, rather he encountered me, at the Kingston Ferry Terminal in the Don't Threaten Me story that I did on July 31st, 2024, here. I was gonna go to the District 8 headquarters for him to file the complaint, but I received tips and leads about the Department of Licensing here. And you can see the tower right there. That's the Washington State Patrol. Inside that building, uh, right next door to the State Patrol, is the Department of Licensing that I'm looking into today. That Department of Licensing has tips and leads, like I said, uh, sent to me about it regarding public records issues, risk behavior, poor behavior of employees causing problems for people. So I'm gonna go there, sort of knock out two in one, get the complaint done. You can file the complaint anywhere you want. And uh, then I'll also handle this potential story about the Department of Licensing. So, well, I've got your attention. If you wouldn't mind liking, sharing, and subscribing, hitting that all notifications bell so you can get my stories right when the release, I'd really appreciate it. Helps a lot. Make sure you get that sharing out there. We're uh, creeping up on 75,000 subscribers. It just blows me away, guys. I mean, the support is beyond appreciated. Absolutely love the support that you show me and my channel and my, my kind of journalism here. So thank you very, very much. Uh, on social media, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on X at I Am Free Auditing, on Facebook at Inland Auditing Media. And if you want to help keep my feet on the streets, you can do so by going to the links in the description for Cash App and Venmo. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys over there in just a moment. What's that? Everything okay? Yeah, a little thirsty if you got like a Red Bull or something. I can't hear you. I said a little thirsty if you got like a Red Bull or something. Uh, well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink anything like that. Fair enough. <laughs> Was there something? I noticed you guys, you were taking a few photos of something. 
Uh, not quite yet. Uh, I've got a little business I got to do inside here in a few minutes, but uh, I think okay. I'm good to go at this point. But, uh, all right, just kind of strange. Just want to make sure everything's all right. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, by the way, uh, when I do go to inside to get my business done, uh, I just want to make sure this is a regional HQ. Is that an accurate statement or is this not a regional? No, we, we break it down into districts. Or, I meant district, sorry. Yeah. A colloquial reference, if you will. So this is... <laughs> um, see where that rotor rooter van is over there? Over your shoulder? Yeah. There's a yellow curve there. So it's a, it's a district HQ? Yeah, district office. Gotcha. Okay. You got it. So there's effectively management here? Uh, at times. Okay. I mean, we're in and out, obviously, all the time. So. Gotcha. Well, you know what? Since, I mean, I don't know if you guys are considered management as sergeants. I'm going to assume you probably are. I do need to address an issue uh, that is pretty serious with a trooper. So can I make a complaint here about that? Yep. Yep. Great. Right. Go ahead and head inside. Just head up front? Oh, yep. Up okay. Front. Thanks. Good, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Not too bad. Uh, I was just waiting, there was two sergeants coming back in, they told me to come in here to meet them. Okay, absolutely, do you know their names? Uh, <laughs> I didn't catch, I didn't pay attention because I just met them out back and okay. they said they were coming up front, so. Yeah, absolutely, let me care for you. Thanks, appreciate it. Appreciate your time. What you got for me? So, I am looking to just address and make a complaint about a uh, trooper Burkhart. He's not in your district. Uh, my understanding is he's in District 8, or at least that's where I encountered him. Okay. Um, his badge is 392, and his supervisor is uh, Sergeant Hoppala. Hoppala, okay. Hoppala. okay. His badge is 995. Yeah, I'm familiar with both of them. Okay. So, what I'm looking to address is just uh, Trooper Burkhart's behavior. It's really inappropriate. And it, fortunately, Sergeant Happola resolved the issue on the spot in terms of not having it escorted beyond what, it, what Trooper Burkhart was doing. Okay. But I'd still just like it addressed in terms of his. Frankly, I think he was trying to seek a fist fight with me, to be honest. I think he was literally trying to get into a fist fight with me. Um, okay. His behavior was outrageous. Um, and I think in looking at personnel policy eight for the Washington State Patrol, um, it really, I think, is clear that it, it violates that. Um, what are the circumstances? So I went to the Kingston Ferry Terminal working on a story about pollution and traffic congestion, which Sergeant Napola and the uh, lady that was working there, the ferry terminal supervisor, made clear we're definitely issues. It's a small town. So I was there getting some B-roll footage, photo and video, and um, literally was not talking with anyone or involved with anyone at all when both Sergeant Hapala and Trooper Burkhardt approached me. Um, when they approached, Sergeant Hapala was maybe about 10, 12 feet off, kind of sort of to my front right. I was just leaning up against the fence taking some photo and video when Trooper Burkhardt approached. He's about a foot and a half from me initially. It was a little close, but not crazy. And he said, hey, can I help you? And I said, um, well, I said, if you want to give me maybe a foot or two, that'd be great. To which he then moved within about three to four inches of me. And he said, is that close enough? And I said, you need to get away from me. Like, 
right now because what you're doing is completely inappropriate. I did. I mean, the context of that is obvious. I don't want him within three or four inches of me. Any human on earth would find that to be way too close. Okay. So um, I told him three, maybe four times, you need to back off or this is not gonna go well. And you know, now I am here making a complaint about that. That's what I meant by that. Cause I'm gonna have to go file a complaint on, you know, I mean, there's no point for him to escalate that. Fortunately, Sergeant Hapla then stepped in after I made it clear I wanted that trooper to back off from me uh, those three or four times and said, hey, um, I think he said Russell or something like that. Um, can, you, can you give him some space? So he backed off two or three feet. And then um, I said, you know, it'd be great if you could just back off a little bit further. I'm, you know, at that point, I was talking to Sergeant Hapla. And the conversation was going great with him. Had no problems with Sergeant Hapla at all. Um, at which point then Trooper Burkhart surrounds me, gets directly behind me, again, within a very close proximity. I wouldn't say three or four inches, but probably about 18 inches, what I would say. I turned around and I said, you need to back off again. Seriously, I mean, this is just, you're, you're getting behind me. You're trying to put yourself in a position to attack me or whatever it is that you're looking to do. You need to stop. At which point Sergeant Hapla said, hey, uh, no problem. He pulled Trooper Burkhart uh, Burkhart away maybe 15 feet or so talked to him for 20 seconds and then eventually Trooper Burkhart went across the parking lot back towards I think his vehicle that okay way. so there was no use of force or no 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 yeah absolutely yeah I want to be clear about that no one laid hands on anybody um, but the the issue was so what exactly is your complaint my complaint is he is acting unbecoming I mean he was okay. escalating and I truly believe if Sergeant Hapala had not been there he probably would have attacked me. I just, his whole behavior, it's on video, I've published the story. I was just there working as a journalist about traffic congestion and, you know, effectively ecology issues, trying to see if there's that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden he walks up and says, it's really suspicious that you're wearing a mask and all this sort of stuff. It's like, really after three years of having to wear masks now, we're gonna be like Saudi Arabia and start doing clothing police stuff or something. It's just crazy that he was even doing any of that. Okay. Um they are obviously out there to make sure that the ferries are safe and they get all kinds of complaints sure. yearly that people are photographing ferries or terminals. Or sure. People. And that's my point. It's, kind of it's normal. To investigate and see what's going on. Well, he can walk that's up and, and I mean, uh, I, I just Sergeant, want you to know that that's not uncommon for troopers to make contact. I don't, I don't disagree with you. And actually Sergeant Hapala really shines as doing what I think any trooper or any police officer should have done. He was cordial. He was polite. He was professional. He was several feet away, making it clear he was just inquisitive. Hey, no problem. I mean, okay. why not? But for, but for a trooper to come up there and after I tell him three or four times you need to back off and he's that close to me, I mean, seriously, any one of us would not want another grown man walking up three to four inches away from us and expect that to be normal. Because if anybody has that low a judgment and carries a firearm, maybe that should be reconsidered as to whether they need to carry a firearm or any weapon anymore because that's just ludicrous okay. and it's just very uh dangerous it's very insulting and yeah okay. so i just really like that address in, in order for me to move this forward it's going to be ha something handled by district eight uh, and or the office of sure. professional standards um what is your last name i don't want to identify i don't need to identify to make a complaint yeah i just rather have it be anonymous what, what, what do you expect us to do with this my expectation would be if they don't have a way to follow up on this because you oh i can give you my email address um that would be great but yeah they're going to need to know who they're talking to yeah i mean you can just put anonymous citizen whatever you want make up a name that works for me uh what to answer your question about what i would like How about done the name of your uh, journalism company or sure yeah it's a wyoming corporation uh it's inland i-n-l-a-n-d Auditing Media, LLC. Okay. Uh, what's the email address? Uh, it's anonymous, A N O N. Go ahead. Uh, so it's anonymous citizen W A. Okay. At protonmail.com. Protonmail. Yeah. And I would also like to, while I'm you know, making this complaint about Trooper Burkhart, I, I would like to express my gratitude that uh, Sergeant Hapala was behaving the way that he did. Because like I said, my, my viewpoint of it is, I think uh, Trooper Burkhart would have gone hands-on and become violent if it hadn't been for Sergeant Hapala. So, 
Okay, it's going to make it pretty difficult to be able to move forward with the complaint in any major way if you don't want to come forward with your name, phone number, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I can pass this over to them with the email address, but that's not going to be generally how they want to deal with this. Okay, they so would much rather see you in person, sure. talk to you in person, whether it be with the phone, but you're probably going to want to consider giving your name. I mean, I'm happy to set up other times to meet in person like we are right now. I'm happy to come I down and meet in person. Certainly forward this information over to District 8, you're probably better off talking with them. Yeah. Uh, in the vein of what you had just said, Sergeant, so when you said it's going to make it difficult, in what ways will it make it Just difficult? more challenging. Um, to in what ways? To you know, have a victim or somebody that's been wrong or something like oh, that. Oh, I want to be clear. I'm not a victim here. I mean, fortunately, Sergeant Hapla prevented victimhood from occurring. And I can by, understand the conduct I'm becoming. We can talk with him about that. Yeah. Um, but right now, it doesn't sound like there's any policy violations, per se. Uh, other than you were a little upset with how close he got. Hmm. Let's see if this is true or not, shall we? In the Washington State Patrol Regulation Manual, Section 8.00.030, 1A1B, titled Unacceptable Conduct, it is written that employees shall not engage in conduct which causes a lessening of public confidence in the ability of the department to perform its functions. Now, let's check out a sample of 10 comments out of more than 1,450 demonstrating the lessening of confidence in Trooper Burkhardt and the Washington State Patrol based on Trooper Burkhardt's behavior. From Colin Gregory, Burkhardt definitely seemed like things might have escalated if there had not been some oversight in the area. I wonder what his complaints and arrest records suggest about his behavior when unsupervised. He seemed very willing. From J. Bowser 9679, Burkhart needs to lose hood badge before he murders someone. The level of aggression is ridiculous. From Greg Doe, how does one get to the age of Russell Burkhart and still act like a fourth grader? From Bullworker, Burkhart feels like ex-military to me. The way he stands, his left shoulder towards the enemy, the weapon outside reach, legs spread out, wearing sunglasses, then the pushy attribute, trying to be intimidating, actively going into the other's personal bubble. And he's doing that not to protect himself, being so close to a possible agitator is dangerous. He tries to get a negative reaction. And I'm sure both of them are in on it. It looks to me like a good cop, bad cop routine. One pulls the victim out of his comfort zone and escalates the situation, and the other rescues the victim and develops a friendly connection. I think that because both are unfriendly with each other over the whole situation, they mirror their stand, their gestures, and sometimes even their speech pattern. From RZA, GZA, ODB. One cop said they were just walking by and the other one said they got calls and complaints. Can't even get their lives straight. From Fred Schulmeyer, 5491. Burkhardt is one of the officers that if he didn't have a badge, he would be behind bars. From Ashley Cantu, 6470. Can you imagine what Burkhart would do if he saw a woman wearing a hijab? Get in her face and keep repeating, why are you wearing a hijab? No one else is wearing a hijab. From Pecan180, I feel like Burkhart was also disrespecting cameraman and his sergeant. Just an all-around box of rocks. Can't even clearly speak his intentions. Difference between does and dies. I bet Burkhart beats his canine. It's obvious that he's a total psycho. Even the sergeant can barely control this tyrant and is probably with Burkhart because he has to babysit him because he's a psycho. I feel so bad for Burkhart's family because he's definitely in the over 40% of cops that go home and beat their wives and kids. Burkhart should not be a canine cop or a cop, period. And from O-I-S-A-J-D-F-P-O-S-I-D, Burkhart is a thug. And a lot of times we do have different tactics that we use as well as DS that we use um, to be able to find out exactly what the nature of the business is. So when you're wearing a mask and you don't want to give your name and all that kind of stuff, it just makes it very difficult. I think uh, having to violate my Fourth Amendment to make people feel more comfortable about filing a complaint seems a bit North Korea-ish. Uh, you, you, your complaint has been taken. I've yeah. forwarded it over there. Okay. But I'm just letting you know it's going to be more difficult. Well, uh, I don't know why you want to withhold your name. That doesn't make any sense to me. Anybody that has a reasonable complaint been doing this job almost 30 years sure. and never had to give me their name on any of them. Well, I'm happy to actually answer that question for you. I just think one of the thing, one of the tools that you guys use, not you guys specifically, I mean, I don't want to make it seem like you guys are the master villains of the world or anything, but the, one of the tools that law enforcement uses in every state of our union is a really terrible, awful thing, and that's fusion centers. 
the criteria you guys use for it, the records requests that you cannot submit and get responsive records for. You're talking way above my pay grade. Well, I mean, I get that, but there the problem is, big, is... There's a big need for them because of the way all the uh, internet stuff hides information and the way they pass it around. I can't be taking all the information. We have to have a group of individuals that can monitor all this stuff. That's yeah. the, the, the new way. I mean, the only the thing, that, I think the thing you, all three of us can hear right now is James Madison rolling over in his grave? I think he would really, really disagree with yeah, you right there. I don't know anything about that. Well, James, you know, I, the I guy who wrote the Constitution. Off to <laughs> District 8. All right. All right. Uh, and also, could I uh, get your guys' names and badge numbers? Uh, you know what? Unless you want to give up your name, I'm okay. You're just not going to identify? Trooper, can I get your name and badge number? Not going to identify? Wow. Let's first go over the issue of these two troopers refusing to show their identification. This is a violation of conduct in accordance with the Washington State Patrol Regulations Code of Conduct found in Section 8.00.0401A1 titled Employee Identification. In that, it is written that all employees shall furnish their name and job title on request while on duty or representing themselves in an official capacity check. Both troopers refuse to do that. And as you can see in the header of the page here in the upper left hand corner, it says rules of conduct. Now let's ask ourselves, fellow Washingtonians and Americans, did the two troopers identify themselves and comply with the rules of conduct? Nope, they sure did not. It's a lot of anger. Boy, call out one of their fellow troopers uh, for trying to get into a fist fight with a citizen. Boy, they get upset. You, uh, I am free. I am, I am free, yeah. My dad loves your content. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. So, well, let him know I said hi. Uh, does he have a particular username on? No. Oh, okay. Just watch his I just I get a certain amount of people that respond, and I kind of get used to about a solid 20 names or so by now. So, like, three Australian ladies I recognize off the bat and a few other people, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. You watch my content? No, no. Not really. Just he sent. So I gotta convert you to being a, being so a. I gotta convert you to become a subscriber. <laughs> Maybe. You take care, man. You too. Hi. How are we doing? Excuse me. Hey, man. Sir. Good. Good. How you doing? I'm looking to help you. I'm looking to see if I can get a PRR form. A PR form? PRR form. PRR form? Yep. Uh, let me see if I can get a PRR form. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Not too shabby. How about yourself, man? Not too bad. Can't complain. That's what I like to see. A little smile on a government employee's face. It's a good thing. Uh, Did you have a question, man? I want to know if they had called us because I don't go to the restaurant or restroom. I want to know if they called us already. Would your name happen to be Gandalf? <laughs> I am Gandalf. <laughs> I knew it. I, I could hear it. Ah, you could. You recognize my voice. I did. Oh, I did. Wow. I knew. I knew. Nice at one point, I might run into this. Ah, very cool. I'm not gonna say anything. I appreciate. What oh, you I do. appreciate. It. Yeah, it's two people in the same building. That's the first time for me. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. I like to see it. Well, that's true. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know what I'll do? No, they haven't called it yet. They haven't called it yet. Okay. Now serving one hundred eighty. I message for somebody to bring one, so I'm not. Okay, sure. sure. I'll just step over there, so I'm out of line. Okay. okay. Let people get up here. Thanks, man. Uh, I did indeed. How are you doing today? Good. Good. I just don't want to be in camera. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? I don't want to be in camera. What? Come on, look at that shining smile. Oh. Oh. 
Uh, actually, I was here filing a complaint about <laughs> Trooper Burkhart from my Kingston Ferry story. Did you see that one? Uh, uh, not Trooper yet. tried to get in a fist fight with me. Is that re recent? Yeah, it's from July 31st. I probably will. I'm sure it'll come out. Yeah, so I came. I had tips and leads for this place having difficulty public records devices, and now I do a lot of public records request stories, transparency stories, and um, got tips and basically thrust bad behavior, which actually has not been the case at all right now. So I figured instead of going to District 8 in Bremerton, which is where Trooper Booker is a part of in terms of the sign, uh, I thought, well, I got to come here for this DOL story and see if there's any merit to the allegations. And I thought the District 10 calls for District 1 is here. So I figured, I'll just go there and file a complaint file The uh, troopers were, or the sergeant I spoke with was really rude, refused to identify. Uh, just yeah, so I'm gonna just head back on over there. You. Yeah, I'm gonna head over there and file a complaint on that sergeant now for not identifying. They're basically gonna round file. It. I, when you see the behavior on on recording, it's unbelievable. I mean, oh, I've experienced. He, he stepped within about that close to me after I told him to take a couple foot step back, and then he said, "Is that close enough?" And then refused to back <laughs> off until his sergeant stepped in and said. Um, you need to back off. And even then, he still circled around me, got behind me, and got close to me again. And it took another intervention by the sergeant. I really felt like it would have, I, I really feel like Trooper Burkhardt would become violent had Sergeant Happel not been there. So, fortunately, and Sergeant Happel is a really nice guy. Well, I think you always have your own backup. Yes. I, I've got my body cam, I've got that. So, it's, uh, it was good to see that they. Uh, ultimately had Burkhart back off that, from Sergeant Apple, that is, so we'll see how that goes, but I'm going to go file a complaint on that, Sergeant. Uh, how long you been uh, watching? Um, well, I think I, I think I started seeing your stuff pop up a few months ago. Oh, okay. And, Kinda you know, new. I'm, I've been, yeah, I'm not sure how long you've been doing it for. But uh, January 19th the last year. It was it was really cool to see someone here doing it in our state mm -hmm. because I've, I've you know recently over the last year or two started picking up and getting interested in watching these things as they're, as they're happening around us. And, nice. And I always thought I was like, man, I wonder if I'll ever see that guy somewhere coming around. And boom, <laughs> lo and behold, it makes me makes me want to stick around just to see what happens. Well, probably nothing at this point. I mean, I'm going to get another five or ten minutes of footage just to make sure that there's no issue with any of the personnel that work here so far everyone's pretty friendly here yeah the guy up front right over there totally nice the lady said she didn't want to be recorded but that's yeah great. she can say that that's totally fine uh, I've got my public records request form this right there one of the things I noticed I uh, got some footage at the Lakewood Department of Licensing uh, office and it was a little bizarre because the lady that was at the counter, basically at the same position as Theo's over there, lost her mind and just didn't quit her job but refused to work while I was there. So she just got up and left a line of people. I've seen quite a few of those. Yeah. You know, on it's kind of strange with with your channel and and I don't know what's up with a lot of these employees who. They, they, they got to know what they're getting into, but, you know, as soon as push comes to shove, I mean, they just, I don't know, they don't want to deal with the uh, parameters of their job. Yeah, it is strange, and the problem is, is like, you know, when you really get down to the brass tacks of it, it comes down to needing to see if those issues are present, and because at the end of the day, if we're having that problem on camera, the likelihood that it's happening when there's no camera is way higher. 100%. And got to do that protection. Well, I just wanted to say it was oh, nice yeah. to meet you, Gandalf. What was your name? I'm Brian. Brian. Yep. Nice to meet you, man. You have a good day. You take yep. care. You I too. guess you'll see yourself here soon. <laughs> yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks again. Take care, man. Hello. How may I help you, sir? Hey, just looking to get the, uh, maybe a business card, if possible, or just the name of the sergeant and the trooper that were out here earlier. That you were just talking to? Yeah. Okay. What's their names? Um, he wants to talk to the sergeant. He just needs their business card. Okay. Or their names? Uh, we'll get you their business cards real quick. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. You guys, you're looking for, you're not in the building right now, so... If you want to file a complaint on someone, you go to the website on our tab. It says, I want to, and you can submit a complaint. You can do it there. That's not what I asked for. That's all I can give you. You can't give me the names of the sergeant that I filed a complaint with and the trooper that was out here? Apparently not. Why? Because I'm just told I, I've got, that's all I can give you right there. Who you told you that? A complaint? There you go. Who told you that? Have a good night. Wow. That's.
that's the Washington State Patrol here. Incredibly rude. Wow. Gonna have to go down to the headquarters building in Olympia. Apparently the state patrol's full of a bunch of abusive tyrants that don't like to actually have complaints made about them. So, we'll have to see how the superintendent feels about that. How's it going? My son told me you're in there. And I was like, is it I am free? <laughs> I don't know. That's the third person in like the span of 10 minutes. That's crazy. How yeah. you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good, I'm doing good. good. I am subscribed, by the way. Awesome. Well, <laughs> that's so crazy. The guy sitting in there on the bench is dad. He said his dad subscribes. That's oh, that's me. you. That's me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's you. And then uh, another guy in there inside the DOL is subscribed. But that was terrible behavior on part of this uh, Washington State Patrol. Real? Oh, I can't wait to see it then. Did you uh, see my story about uh, when I was at the Kingston Ferry on July 31st and Trooper Burkhart got really close to me and I said, hey, you need to back off? There's some uh, up in that way. Kitsap is also bad. Um, Colt News? Yeah, I did a sort of a follow-up. Uh, the one that released the one before today when I was at Bay Bridge, I went to the uh, Public Works facility there working on a story about um, stolen copper wire oh yeah, yeah and so i went there to get b-roll footage and actually got confirmations that they just got security problems right just in general oh, yeah. that's good for people to know right you know when they're voting and stuff yeah. so anyways i was in there uh this guy dave calls the police bainbridge shows up uh, no problem didn't have an issue with them at all uh their deputy chief was trying to make declarations to them that were silly and i just dismissed that but the um uh, when I was leaving, I saw a, in case you haven't seen the story, I saw a Corporal Ledbetter down there, spoke to him about the Sergeant Vestaya in uh, Mike's, Colt News's uh, story that the Sergeant was abusive towards him. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, why is he doing this? Because you as a Corporal and this other officer, totally fine. What's the issue? And I think Corporal Ledbetter was in kind of a hot hard spot you know because it's a sergeant who's above him uh, at the same time I, I I felt like he wasn't okay with what sergeant Pastaya did so yeah. you know it's just exposing it and you know hopefully if we can get people to just make better decisions I mean that's what we're aiming for right yeah that's, yeah. that's the goal yeah. so I, I actually live down in Vancouver and one of the uh, city of Vancouver police officers uh, she was teasing a guy in the balls a shoplifter I saw that story Oh my gosh. Right. And, and it got upheld. The jury. And I'm thinking, really, people? You yeah. think that's okay to do? If yeah. you think that's okay to do, you know, I wish I had qualified a video. I work in public education. And let me tell you, if I handled my students, oh like my the police gosh. handle people, I, I'm looking at million dollar lawsuits. I mean this is the this is the problem is like nowadays what we have is we have this divide where it's almost like if you're gonna be uh, and I'm, I'm down the middle I mean you've seen my stories Michael Carlos uh, deputy Jimmy Rogan down in Vancouver I am totally pro good police yeah. I am totally against bad government employees anywhere oh yes and so when we see captain I want to tease somebody in the testicles going crazy I don't understand how a jury can sit there and argue that that's the right way to go about things it's sick yeah um, I'm not a big fan of um Clark County Sheriff's Department because they had hired Brian Hunsaker, who was the mm. former uh, union head yeah. of Portland Police. And so they had hired him. I'm like, well, that's not a good choice now, is it? Yeah, no. He literally put out paperwork that was lying and, you know, false information. And I'm like, no, that's not a good choice. And so I'd kind of been watching them. I see them run stop signs all the time. Well, um, Few, maybe a month ago, they flipped their lights on behind me just to push me out of the way so it could go on. Oh uh, yeah, and no I'll tell you, Van, the Vancouver Sheriff, or I'm sorry, the Clark County Sheriff's Department, it's got a mix of good and bad. I mean, I don't know if you saw my stories from when I was down there, where I was uh, unlawfully trespassed out of the public utility district, the PUD. But then it got squared away by Sergeant Nichols. Awesome sheriff's deputy, and so is Deputy Rogan. Yeah! But then the Vancouver Police Department is just full of a bunch of horrible human beings.
as a sergeant, I'm banking. I'm not going to have this. I'm so you're not going to have this conversation. So you just said you're, you're going to have the conversation. I'm not. You're not. I'm not. No. Well, if they want you to leave the property, you have to leave the property. If a business or a entity asks us to uh, trespass someone, we go off the fact that it meets their requirements to trespass someone. Um, so I did check. She's not going to be available today, and she is not going to be here next week. But now I would like to address that issue. That, okay. is, that is not correct. I'd okay. like to address that. We're issue. not going to address it. I mean, that is just straight up mafia police department. They're horrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. So I just, I, I don't understand. I think it's just an issue of personality, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. Some people are good, some people are bad, and that's just how simple it is. So. Absolutely. Anyways, I got to head on my next story, man. Thanks for your support. All Appreciate right. your yeah, subscription. I'll be for you, man. All right, man. Take care. Hey everyone, I am free. It's August 26, 2024. I'm in the city of Olympia, the state of Washington's capital here in Thurston County. I am heading on over to the Washington State Patrol headquarters to lodge a complaint regarding Trooper Russell Burkhart, badge 392, for the incident at the Kingston Terry, uh, Ferry Terminal. You need to remove your trooper here. He's Don't threaten me. Can I just talk to you? Don't oh, threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm Don't telling you you need me. to back up out of my space. Don't threaten me. That close? Are you trying to pick a fight? Uh, his really awful behavior, his uh, unwillingness to de-escalate, and in fact do the exact opposite, to escalate. So I'm going to go over there and see if I can get this complaint filed. However, I also need to address two more complaints regarding a sergeant an unnamed sergeant and an unnamed trooper from what you just saw when i went to the district one headquarters sir how are you good Hi, I'm uh, Detective Sergeant J.C. Johnson with the State Patrol. Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Sergeant. Will Rutherford. Hi, please Steve. to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, what was it again? Steve. Steve. Okay. That's what I thought. So we were advised that uh, you want to come in and file a complaint? Yeah, okay? I don't want to go inside. Maybe okay. we could just sit That's over okay. there or something sure. like yeah. that. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Did you want to uh, verbally provide the complaint? Did you want to write yeah, down? That's what yeah, Well, uh, if you just want to kind of like verbally tell us what's... Yeah, uh, I also what's want to show you some video because what can be better than to just show you exactly what happened. Uh, I'll give you just like the, the quick narrative and if you guys have any questions, please do ask. Okay. I'll do my best to be helpful. Um, so I was working on a story about pollution and congestion at the Kingston Ferry Terminal uh, earlier this month. And I, while up there, was just getting B-roll footage. Uh, it actually turned out I showed up at the wrong time because I was told it was very congested and when I got there, it wasn't congested it wasn't at all, time. actually. So uh, that was unfortunate because it's kind of a drag. Uh, so while I was just getting B-roll footage, photo and video, a, a Washington State Patrol trooper approached me, well, two of them, a Sergeant Hapala, badge 195, and a Trooper Burkhart, Russell Burkhart, badge uh, 392 and the initial conversation though brief was fine um, I was kind of near a railing uh, about 20 meters from the toll booths and uh, it was just like I said getting photograph video footage and uh, Trooper Burkhart walked up he was a little close not too crazy about a foot and a half away a little too close and uh, he said can I help you with something I said yeah if you could give me a foot or two that'd be great to which his response was to step within about three inches of me. And he goes, is that close enough? Or he was either, is that close enough? Or like this, or something to that effect. <laughs> I don't think I, I know a single person on this planet that would think that that's what I was intending. And so I, I waited a minute and I said, you know, are you, are you trying to start a fight here or something? Or, you know, you need to back up. And he just refused. Three times, I think it was, if I recall correctly. Um, Sergeant Hapala asked him to step back a bit after I had told him, you know, this is not going to go well. 
And uh, I tried to make that go well clear to a sergeant who's also going to be a part of this complaint at District 1 HQ. My intent was to file a complaint if he didn't, you know, stop doing what he was doing at the time. Um, so Sergeant Ampla eventually had him move back, I'd say about three or four feet, and uh, he was standing there and started explaining what I think was his reasoning behind why he did what he did. He said, because I was wearing a mask, and I was taking photos and video, I was making people uncomfortable. I literally didn't talk to a single human being. I was standing apart from everybody. I don't think maybe one or two people walked by me in about a span of five to 10 minutes, that's about it. Um, but that seemed to be the, the motive for him approaching me and clearly being frustrated. I mean, he was visibly, I wouldn't say angry, but very irritated or frustrated. Um, I then asked him to, you know, just step away a little bit more, to which he did, but he encircled me <laughs> and got behind me. I, not like inches, but I'd say about two feet. Again, that's uncomfortable. He's carrying a firearm. He's got an ass. He's got a taser. He's got spray. He's already irritated and frustrated. It took his sergeant three or four times to get him to back off a few feet. Having someone armed behind me that's already been doing that is not a comfortable feeling when they've already been kind of doing what they've been doing. So I asked him to back off again, to which Sergeant Hapla then said, hey, give me a minute. He took uh, Trooper Burkhardt about 15, 20 feet back, talked to him for about 30 seconds, and then who I came to know later was the supervisor for the ferry terminal. Um, I can't remember the name of her off the top of my head right now, but she approached Trooper Burkhardt. They spoke for a few more. Well, I actually spoke with Sergeant uh, Hapla, uh, explaining why I was there, actually just what I explained to you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the issue there was just this unnecessary escalation and later on when I went to the Washington State Patrol's uh, regulation manual, and I may be a little out of date because I looked at the 2013 one, <clears throat> but when I looked at uh, Section 8 for conduct, the Code of Conduct section, um, you know, it's really clear that would be unacceptable behavior in Section 30 for the uh, sort of making it more difficult for Washington State Patrol to do their job because it seems to be kind of injuring their their viewpoint, uh, at least from the people's perspective. Um, it also, I think, is just escalatory for no good reason. Um, I think it stands out any real thought that his moving in on me in the way that it did was was escalatory. I mean, I can't imagine I'd be happy if I walked out of the three inches in your face. It's a little too close, right? So I'd just like that to be addressed with him. Um, like I said, I did nothing to provoke that confrontation. And I really do believe that if Sergeant Hapla wasn't there, that he would have escalated that into a physical confrontation. Uh, for what reason, I don't know. but. I really think that's where it would have gone, and that's not good. There's no reason. You guys deal with enough crap during the day. You don't need to add an additional fight to it, right? <laughs> you know, there's enough There's enough maniacs out in the world to deal with without adding a fight to the situation or whatever. So I'd just like that addressed, if I could, please. Um, when I, however, went to go file the complaint initially, which was last Thursday, Thursday or Friday, I went to the District 1 HQ uh, between Puyallup and Tacoma, and actually the reason I did is because I had a story I was working on about the Department of Licensing in that same building. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'll kill two birds with one stone, I'll go in, file my complaint, do the DOL story, which actually didn't turn out to be a story at all, they were wonderful human beings there, and um, get it all done. So when I went there, as I typically do when I'm working on a story, I was getting some B-roll footage outside the facility. Two sergeants approached me, asked me if I needed assistance, um, and I decided to file a complaint with one of them at that point, so he said, sure, meet me inside. That unnamed sergeant and an unnamed trooper um, met me in the lobby two, three minutes later, and the sergeant began taking my complaint. Um, it seemed like during the course of me providing the complaint to him that he was, I'd say, mildly frustrated I don't know what the nature of the mild frustration was. For all I know, someone broke his car window or something. But he seemed to be mildly frustrating. And uh, frustrated. He seemed to be mildly escalating. He did nothing 
confrontational, I want to be clear. He just did, he just seemed really irritated. And I don't know if that was, like I said, because I'm filing a report or complaint rather on a trooper or not. But during this complaint that I was filing with the sergeant, um, he said, I need to get your identification if this is going to go anywhere, is effectively what he said. And I said, why do you need my identity for me to make this complaint? He said, well, it's just, it's going to be difficult, is exactly what he said, if I, if I don't get your name. I said, okay, what's going to be difficult about it? He said, well, it'll be challenging. Okay, we'll make it challenging. Well, just, you know, I don't know if they're going to take it seriously, something to that effect, um, if you don't provide your name. I'm like, well, I just don't want to identify. And uh, I explained, you know, part of the reasons I wear a mask is because it's sort of my protest against fusion centers. I don't think they're good. It's sort of my free speech to say I don't like them. <laughs> I don't think fusion centers are going to come down because I'm wearing a mask. I, I doubt I have that power, but um, that's part of the reason why I do it. Um, so when the complaint was completed, I got up. I asked the sergeant and the trooper for their identification. And the sergeant, as he was just about to go through the door and the trooper was behind him, so in between me and the sergeant, the sergeant said, well, you know what? If you're not gonna give me your name, I'm not gonna give you my name. And when I looked at uh, section 40 of the Code of Conduct, it's really explicitly clear in section A, subsection one, that the standing orders are, you will identify if you're asked. You will provide your identity, your name, badge number, et cetera. He just straight up refused. And if that wasn't bad enough, and I think this is the most injurious part of this in my interaction with that sergeant. The trooper, I then asked, and he seemed to be like an unranked, I'll call it, he didn't have any stripes, any chevrons, anything like that. Um, I asked him for his identification. And what he did was, he's like at the door and he turns back and looks at me and you could literally see it on his face. He knew he was supposed to do it. I mean, the only thing that would have been better is if there was a tattoo on his forehead that says, I know I should do this right now. And he then stopped and thought for about one to two seconds and he goes, and he just goes right through the door. Now, I think, my opinion, for whatever that's worth, is that trooper absolutely would have identified if his sergeant had not already set the tone and the tenor for disobeying the code of conduct of the Washington State Patrol in Section 8. So I, I think that sergeant just really did a great disservice through the whole process. And I think after having seen his behavior at the end where he failed to identify, my best guess is that he didn't want to uh, or that he wasn't really wanting to take that complaint, was upset that I was making the complaint. And I think that last behavior sort of was what sealed that in. As he was just upset about that. So I'd like to, first of all, get the sergeant's name and badge number and that trooper's name and badge number um, so I can just you know have that information. Um, and then also I'd just like that to get a address. And then I don't want you guys to think I am just making this up. So what I'd like to do, if you are up for it, is just provide the video footage here. Now, I do want to be clear. The only edit that is in this video right here is, well, there's, there's two things. Anything previous to him coming out in the lobby along with the other trooper, like when I met him outside, that's not there. I didn't have any issue with anything that went on out there, so I don't really think there's anything relevant there. Um, and unfortunately, my regular camera here dumped part of it, but my body camera, which is why I always wear a backup, uh, did capture the rest of it. So I clipped those two parts together where they continuously go. So it'll look a little different, but you'll be able to tell by the, the pace and the conversation that I didn't take anything out like me telling the sergeant he's a piece of crap. I didn't do anything like that. I try not to swear, I try not to be mean and abusive and that kind of stuff. So uh, did you guys want to see the video? Um, yeah, so okay. I guess uh, my question is if we would be, would we be able to get a copy of that if this complaint um, 
you know, progresses, basically. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish the story anyways, um, so you can see that. But if you guys would like, um, my company has a Gmail account that I could just upload this to mm -hmm. and then just share it with you guys. have access to that, basically. Yeah, I can just share the folder okay. with you yeah. if that works for you. I'll take that down then. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's just inland. I N L E N D auditing A U D I T I N G media at Proton Mail. Oh, I'm sorry, at Gmail. At Gmail. Yeah, I usually use Proton Mail. Dot com. Uh, yeah, Gmail dot com. Yep. And then what I'll do is, uh, if if I can get your business cards before I go, what I'll do is I'll just create a folder. I'll put that uh, video footage in there, yep. and then um, I'll just share it to you guys. You can do whatever. Inland auditing media at Gmail dot com. Yep. Okay. And then if you guys want, uh, like I said, did you want to see the, thank you, the video here? Uh, just real quick, let me ask you sure. a few follow-up questions here. Yeah, you got sure as well. The, Thanks. Got the basic details. Okay. Uh, the, let's we go back to the initial uh, ferry and terminal. Sure, incident. you bet. Uh, when was that again? Do you recall the exact date? I don't, but you know what, if you give me just a moment, I can absolutely tell you. Try to make sure we get the yeah, basic no, no, who, sure. what, where, when. Yep, totally understand. No problem. And then I guess just to clarify, did you have a complaint against Sergeant Hoppola in that scenario, or is it just against no, Trooper Bur Burkhardt? It's definitely not a complaint. Um, in fact, I, I think he really <laughs> prevented Trooper Burkhardt from doing something from bad. Being worse. The only thing I think that could, and it's just a suggestion, it's not even a a terrible person or I don't mean that but I, I think if he had just responded quicker I, I think just from a common sense perspective if, if anybody saw that right like your, your partner here is seeing that and I walk up and I get within three inches of your, of your face even if you're gonna be calm and composed he's probably thinking this is not going well something is strange here why is he moving within three inches of my partner's face right that's just bizarre um, I, I think if he maybe just acted quicker because I really was worried. I was like, this guy's about to hit me. That's what I thought. I thought he's going to attack me. And this sucks because I don't want to get into an actual fight with a Washington State Trooper. That's the last thing I'm looking for today. That is not on my agenda ever. Overall, it seemed like the sergeant kind of was the intermediary. I think he literally saved the bacon on that day. Yeah, because, oh my gosh, that is not what I wanted. Uh, give me just a moment and I'll find that here. And then did you say that's at the Kingston Ferry Terminal? It was at the Kingston Ferry Terminal, yeah. Actually, the Sergeant was pretty helpful on when to go back to. If I was tracking information correctly, so for Sergeant Hapala, it was you have more just of a concern of just maybe identifying a potential situation sooner, yeah, that's and, it. and intervening in a, in a way or manner. So not necessarily a complaint, just a, yeah, a awareness a discussion with the sergeant. If you see something, maybe intervene a little quicker. Yeah, I mean, I'll put it this way: like if if, if Trooper Burkhart thought there was some illegal activity going on. What I would have expected, I mean, just as a citizen, is if he really thought I was committing a crime, whatever that was, I would expect him to move in and then lay hands on me to probably put me in handcuffs or something like that. You know what I mean? Or at, least at a minimum, say you're detained or something like that. But he didn't do that. He just stepped in, and I think his body language, his tonal inflections, his facial expressions really showed he was irritated. And the language he used right afterwards was very much irritating he's like yeah you know you're making people uncomfortable you're wearing a mask it's like so what he's identifying is it, to me at least he moved in to intimidate me or wanting to intimidate me 
because people were bothered by my presence and how I was dressed and what I was doing, which all was all that was lawful. And that's why he did what he did. Um, and I think it's such a stark juxtaposition between Trooper Burkhart and Sergeant Haplick. And Sergeant Haplick was standing back. He was. You can, when you see the video of it, you can see his analyzing the scenario. And eventually, then he steps in. He's like, "Hey, look, we're not trying to do this." I agree, Sergeant Apple. In fact, I told him on video, I said, I think you're behaving perfectly fine. And in fact, I continued my conversation with him. He seems like a really nice guy. Um, so that's that's the stark contrast between those two troopers. And uh, I, I just, yeah, I just would have preferred if Sergeant Apple had been like, hey, whoa, Trooper Burkhardt, just, just give him a foot or two here. That's, that's all he's asking for, right? Would have been the right thing. But I also know that there's a culture of and I think it's kind of a gray area, at least it's my perspective, that you don't want to impugn the actions of another Leo out in the field because it might seem as, make it seem as if there's a conflict between the law enforcement officers. And I think that might have been why he didn't act as quickly. I'm only guessing. I don't have any way to prove that. And if I tracked that first part of the information correctly. It, it sounds like you, know, you do have the complaint for Trooper Burkhart that you want for, you said, I believe it was your words, unnecessary escalation? Yeah, yeah, just conduct unbecoming effectively. I mean, it, it, like I said, in accordance with uh, 8.00.030, where it just talks about unacceptable conduct. I think it just makes, it, it creates an unnecessary situation that reduces the trust from the public to state patrolmen when that happens. What I think most people expect is the escalation. Now, obviously, if I started getting threatening with them or saying, you know, hey, you know, I don't like you, you stupid trooper, I'm going to punch you in the face. Oh, well, yeah, that's like disorderly at a minimum, if not assault. I mean, you know, so if I did something like that, I could see him maybe escalating it. But I mean, beyond something like that, yeah, there's no reason for him to do what he's doing. That was all I had. And I don't that. believe that by <laughs> I'm not giving my, my examples. I'm not trying to use those words in okay. any way. I think uh, I think I've got a good handle on kind of what you're explaining okay. for that ferry terminal incident, and then sure. if we move on to uh, the incident at the District One office there, you bet. Um, I think you said that was like last Thursday. Is that what you said? Do you recall yeah. what date that was exactly? Uh, so I know Thursday, I believe, would be August 22nd, and Friday would have been August 23rd. Actually, I think it was the 23rd. 23rd. I think it was the 23rd. Yeah. So we'll say 8:23 of 24. Do you recall what time of day that was? You know, it had to be probably around 11 to 11.30 because I went to then do a public records request at the library system after that. So yeah, I want to say it's probably about 11, 11.30. 11, 11, 11.30 a.m.? Okay. You know what I'll do? I mean, I've got the raw footage, so what I can do is look at the timestamp of the raw footage, and I've got your cards. I can just email you afterwards. Appreciate the information. Yeah, sure. And, and it sounds like basically related to the actual complaint you have is that you don't know who that sergeant or the trooper actually are. You don't have their name or badge. Well, yeah, I don't know anything about them. So like if I were to follow up and actually like, let's say I wanted to do a public records request on it, I could be like, yeah, I filed a complaint on this day, but I wouldn't be able to perhaps be as detailed as I might need to be by saying, yes, I met with Sergeant Adams, whatever, you know, uh, on this date at this place, along with Trooper Stevens, whatever. Um, I just have no, no identity from them. Uh, but it's also that they're just not comporting with the code of conduct of the Washington State Patrol. I mean, they're supposed to identify. It's clear it's in the regulations manual. Um, I mean, maybe since 2013, it's changed to the degree that maybe they've changed the uh, taxonomy or something like that. But generally speaking, I would assume that they didn't get rid of the identification part. That seems like a pretty basic component to being a police officer, especially when they're working in uniform. And then uh, just kind of getting down to kind of the gist of what that complaint is, his kind of his behavior as he was taking your complaint? Yeah, I didn't, you know, at first when he when he was taking the complaint, I didn't, he seemed irritated. But like I said, I mean, I don't know. Maybe his wife left him last night. I'd be irritated. I have no idea what was going on in this guy's life, so I wasn't going to harp on him at that moment. It wasn't until he got up and went to go inside and I asked him for identification. He's like, well, if you're not gonna give me your name, I'm not gonna give you my name. He's like, okay, well now I understand why he's irritated. He's irritated because I'm filing a complaint about a Washington State Patrol trooper and you know, maybe the Washington State Patrol got a whole bunch of calls or something. I don't know, after the 
story was released about Trooper Burkhart. But I mean, that has nothing to do with him. I mean, you know, okay. you crash your car into something, I don't, I don't behave poorly about it. I just let you deal with the problem. <laughs> right, right, okay. So essentially when he failed to identify himself to you and then that comment he made of, you know. Yeah, I realized myself, the whole thing. You know, and now, and that's why I wanted to come here because my perspective is he probably round filed that. And then, this sergeant obviously is very charismatic. He has great influence over the people there because not only did he get the trooper to behave unreasonably, but then when I went to the window, and it looked like maybe there's some like cadets or something that works there. They all kind of seem to be moving around like a flock of seagulls together. This is sort of weird, but uh, there was also a guy that clearly was a regular employee. And I walked up to the window and I said, could I get the business cards of those two troopers I just spoke with? Now the guy I spoke with, he wouldn't identify. Uh, he literally lied to me, like on camera. I said, could I get the names and badge numbers and you know, preferably business cards of the sergeant and the trooper? He's like, I don't know who they are. <laughs> it was so obvious, like he absolutely knew who they were. He watched me talk to them. And he's just like, yeah, I don't know who they are. I'm not gonna give you any information. And it was just this sort of rallying, you know, circle the wagons, we're not gonna let the villain man come in here and deal with us or whatever. And I'm just like, wow. I did not expect that from the state patrol. I'd expect that from some quaint little county where, you know, Hillbilly McStevenson's the local sheriff and, you know, does some weird stuff in town, but not from the state patrol. That was honestly kind of weird. So I guess just kind of going back, you said uh, you were at the District 1 office and then two sergeants approached you and then one agreed to take your complaint? Yeah, so initially I was out, uh, I think they were uh, curious, um, you know, why I was taking photos. Yeah, yeah, so, I know why. So uh, the first sergeant asked me, I kind of joked around a little bit, said, yeah, I could use a Red Bull if you got one. Uh, the other sergeant came out and he was uh, more curious. That's ultimately the same sergeant that took my complaint. Um, and I said, well, uh, yeah, actually, I, I do have to go inside and make a complaint, so if I could get that done. He's like, sure, I'll meet you inside. Everything was fine at that point. And then when I got in, that's when it, you know. So did he take you back to like an individual office or were you no, just like at the front line. counter? Okay, yeah. okay. Is that the line? Okay. Gotcha, I, I guess that, that was kind of something I was curious about is there was this trooper that was present was he, did he just happen to be standing nearby or why? Yeah, he was okay. standing nearby. So the trooper, uh, are, are you able to describe the, the sergeant at all? It might help us identify who the Yeah, I mean, I can, I can show Oh, you got the, yeah, I I got got the video. Yeah, the video. Uh, he's older, so he's probably about 55, 52, kind of right, right around there. Um, 5'10", 200 pounds, 205 pounds, white, graying hair, kind of red cheeks. Maybe some rosacea, or he was just irritated at me and was red cheeked okay. that. Okay, and then the trooper obviously is very tall. Uh, any other di distinguishing features about that trooper? Brown hair, I'd say he's probably about 32, 33. He's not actually 6'10, I'd say he's probably about 6. He's taller than me, so I'd say he's probably about 6'4. Six, four. Six, four, okay. uh, you know, was, he, was he younger than the sergeant? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I said, the sergeant is probably about, I guess. 52, 55, uh, the trooper, the unranked trooper, I think he was probably about 32, 33-ish, kind of right around there. And they were just in the kind of the standard blue uniform yep. that you expect to see? Okay. Yep, regular Washington State Patrol uniform. Okay. Okay. And then uh, kind of about that, that trooper, there was no, uh, nothing concerning about his behavior minus that he knew he was supposed to ID to you, shook his head and walked away. Yeah, no, I, I think my gut tells me that he was standing there like, uh, we don't know who this guy is, he's wearing a mask, I'm just gonna make sure everything's okay. Sure, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, he didn't do anything inappropriate up to the point where he refused to identify. And it, like I said, it really was bad because I don't, I don't think he would have done anything bad if it hadn't been for the tone that the sergeant had set. I think you could literally see the calculus in his mind and on his face when I asked him for identification. He he was almost like on the cusp of doing it and then he just thought about it and was like, no. he didn't say no, he just turned around and walked through the door. Okay. Do you have any follow up on, on that particular? I know you'll show the video, but unfortunately you know, I may not know everyone's name or facial recognition, but we will do, do our due diligence 
to determine who employees are. Any other distinguishing characteristics that you can see of the employees, facial hair, tattoos? No facial hair. I do not recall any tattoos that were visible. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to watch the video real quick and then? Sure. Anything else that you take a note of that we notice? We could come together too, so we can yeah, both try to make it easier better. for you. Yeah, you want to come sit here or something? Sure. I can go back towards the beginning and that's okay yeah. when you when you send it to okay. him, when we get yeah we'll have a chance to like Figure slow down pause for you He's trying to look on a computer screen so YouTube page uh, we're yeah gonna it's just inland auditing inland, media inland inland auditing media yeah and if you go it's probably only four or five videos in at this point six videos in something like that um, and you'll see it okay it says don't threaten me the title and then um, you know if these um, investigations progressed to a place where we wanted to uh, speak to you again would you be willing to be contacted again for sure. any interview yeah, questions you, you or anything uh, okay. the, the best way by email is same inland auditing media just a proton I just use the Gmail just so I can do a like, you know quick upload or video or something like so that so same one word inland auditing media at ProtonMail. P-R-O-T-O-N-M-A-I-L.com. Proton, Proton Mail. Not familiar with that one. It is the best email service in the world. Okay. Really good stuff. Okay. It's based out of Switzerland. And that's for if we do want to uh, end up speak with, speak with speak, you again. Speak with you again or arrange yeah, how to yeah, speak with you. Yeah, email will be there, yeah. Okay. So, okay. And then Media at ProtonMail.com. Okay. And then when you spoke about um, kind of this follow-up story being released Thursday, is that on that YouTube page, that same yeah, YouTube page? Yeah. Cool. Right. Lovely. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Try and carefully step out away from the chairs here. Appreciate your information. Yeah, and thanks. Appreciate it. We'll look into the matter. All right. Well, you guys have a good day. All right, you safe. too as well. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. guys well as you can see I'm here in the Washington State Patrol headquarters um, that over there is professional standards I just met with the two sergeants out of professional standards that is detective sergeant JC Johnson and detective sergeant William J Rutherford so in meeting with them I discussed the two issues uh, one was of course at the Kingston ferry terminal the other one was at uh, the District 1 headquarters. Um, I have a much better feeling about the interaction here with those two detective sergeants from uh, Internal Affairs, effectively professional standards is what they're most often referred to. I was able to identify as well, great police officers like uh, Deputy Jimmy Rogan, Michael and Carlos from the Federal Protective Services and others. I think that's something I like to really point it out is I'm bad, I'm, I'm against bad government employees, not police officers, not anyone specifically. There are good police officers out there that have video evidence of it. So uh, that is it here for today at the Washington State Patrol Headquarters here in Olympia. I've got a couple other stories I got to go work on. So I will be heading out to those locations now, but that is the uh, complaints filed for both uh, incidents. So that's it here for today. If you wouldn't mind, 
please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that all notifications bell so you can get my stories right when they release. You can follow me on X at I Am Free Auditing, on Facebook at Inland Auditing Media, and if you want to help keep my feet on the streets, you know where to go. You go to the links in the description for Cash App and Venmo, and you can help me out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting my journalism, and I'll see you guys at the next location. Take care for now. Bye-bye.